As of the time of this recording, we just watched the potato episode of Black Adder. Which was hilarious. Yeah. A, a prime example of calling someone's bluff, and then you gotta go do it, but you bullshit your way through yeah. it. Yeah. That's the perfect way to describe it. Yeah. Um, I like the progression in the seasons. I feel like since an overwhelming amount of people said the first season was whatever, was, was watchable, but not maybe as funny, right? This started off slow, and it's gotten so much better. Yeah, yeah. I, I Three was so much better than two. Two was so much better than one. Four, I hope, is going to be just as funny, if not better than It three. It better be money. Yeah. It, that's yeah. the title. Yeah. All right, let me get this up a little bit. Uh, what what am, am I doing here? Oh. All right, here we go. Yes, let's do it. Nice. Go away. My lord, there is someone at the door to see you. Oh, God. What time is it? Four o'clock. Aldrich, I've told you before, you mustn't let me sleep all day. This woman charges by the hour. My lord, it's four o'clock in the morning. Someone wants to see me at four in the morning? What is he, a giant lark? Oh, he's, he's a priest. <laughs> Tell him I'm Jewish. Introduce me, Dad. What? I think I'm to introduce me to your friend. Oh, very well, but I think you're making a mistake. Baldrick, I'm delighted to introduce you to... I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Molly. Of course, Molly. Baldrick, this is Molly, a dear friend of mine. I'm not dear. You're very reasonable, actually, Baldrick. Most girls will charge an extra sixpence for all the horrible things they want. Yes, all right, all right. <laughs> Baldrick, this is Molly, an inexpensive prostitute. Molly, this is Baldrick, a pointless peasant. Now, well, uh, what about this priest? Tell him to take his sacred backside out of here. What's more? If he comes begging again, tell him I shall report him to the Bishop of Bath and Wells, who drowns babies during christenings and eats them in the vestry afterwards. Bye, Baldrick. Bye, -bye Molly. <laughs> Get out. Oh, you're a one, aren't you? When you should be whispering sweet conversation on nothings like goodness something twice the size of the royal barge is just hoved into view between the sheets. You don't say a word. But enter the creature from the black latrine and he won't stop. Treating me like a human being. Look, if I'd wanted a lecture on the rights of man, I'd have gone to bed with Martin Luther. Poor <laughs> it now. It's that priest, he says he still wants to see you. And did you mention the baby-eating Bishop of Bath and Wells? Oh, I did, my lord. What did he say? He said I am the baby-eating Bishop of Bath and Wells. Good lord. Any children have you, Blackadder? No, I'm not married. In that case, I'll skip breakfast and get straight down to business. <laughs> Do you know what day it is today? No, I don't. It is exactly one year ago to the day that the bank of the black monks of St. Herod, banking with a smile and a stab, of which I am the assistant manager, lent you one thousand pounds. The motto is repayment or revenge. Of course, and, and naturally I would have paid you back, but unfortunately, and this is the real bugger, I've gone and lost my wallet. <laughs> Disastrous. It had all my addresses in it, all those little notes saying, forget ye not, and of course, all my money. That's no concern of mine. The debt is now due. Not to repay a loan is a sin, and we black monks, we hate sin. Ah, um, I introduce my mother. Good morning, my dear. I hope you haven't forgotten our appointment. Who's not Pompey? My pretty to play nuns and novices, so don't forget your wimple. For you. You come with me. Where? To visit the last poor fool who lost his wallet. Oh, man. That's like Jabba the Hutt coming in. Yeah. Where's my money? Where my money at? I'm... <sighs> That was a good. That was a good cover from Black Adder. It's like, hey, here's my mother. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird in itself being in bed with your mother, but it's like, oh, and then he knew her. Uh huh. Mm, of course he did. Just made it more awkward. <laughs> oh my God, what's gonna happen, man? Oh, oh man. Jesus. Wonder if you, it'll be comparable to how debt is collected in modern times. Oof. William Greaves, born 1513 in Chelmsford with the love of Christ, died 1563 in agony with a spike up his bottom. 
Tis ever and so, Uncle, with the black monks. Oh, scream, did they scream and gurgle as they skewer this cat flap for want of a father. I think you'll get my message. Yes, indeed. But tell me, Bishop, let me just test the water what here, the hell is... so to speak. I'm um, supposing I was to say to you something like I'm a close friend of the Queen's and I think she'd be very interested to hear about you and Molly and the Wimple. So why don't we just call it quits a fatso? <laughs> I would say, firstly, the Queen would not believe you. And secondly, you'll regret calling me fatso later today. Ah. I will have my money by even song tonight, or oh, Bottom will wish it had never been born! Wow! <laughs> poor Tom is a cold. Pity poor Tom, for his nose is frozen, and he does shiver, and he's mad! Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm up a certain creek without a certain instrument. Either I raise a thousand pounds by this evening, or I get murdered. What should I do? It's obvious. What? You'll have to get murdered. You never raise that sort of money. Oh, God, that poor trick. A piffling thousand. Name a fellow, Edmund, and dub his impudence. I haven't got a thousand, Duncan. I've got 85 quid in the whole world. But you're always boasting to the Queen about how wealthy you are. A cunning web of deceit suddenly spun about the court to improve my standing, unfortunately. Do you mean you've been... dipping? My whole life has been a tissue of whoppers. <laughs> I consider myself one of England's finest liars. Oh, my God, Percy. A giant hummingbird is about to eat your hat and cloak. Oh, no! You see, I'm terrific. It seems to have gone now. Couldn't you just dip into the family fortune? There isn't one. My father blew it all on wine, women, and amateur dramatics. <laughs> At the end, he was eking out a living doing humorous impressions of Anne of Cleves. I'm sorry. I had no idea. But do not despair, for I have some small savings, carefully harvested from my weekly allowance, set aside against my frail old age. By lucky hap, tis just over a thousand, methinks, and has for years been hidden beyond the wit of any thief in an old sock under, under the, the squeaky, squeaky floorboard, floorboard behind, behind the, the kitchen, kitchen dresser. You see it? Seen it, pinched it, spent it. Oh, no. Same goes for the two farthings Boric thinks he's got hidden inside that mouldy potato. Oh, bloody hell. Then you are doomed. Alas, for God's sake, let us sit upon the carpet Sad stories. Certainly but, not. When Lord Blackadder is in trouble, he does not sit about. He won't be able to sit about with a spike up your bottom. Still, I've got 85 quid and that's a start. I'm sure I'll think of something as long as I'm not disturbed. My Lord, the Queen does demand your urgent presence on pain of death. Oh. The path of my life is strewn with cowpats from the devil's own satanic herd. <laughs> Madam, you sent for me. What? I can't remember. Scatterbrain, I am. Well, perhaps, ma'am, if I might be allowed to withdraw, I have one or two tiny matters to attend to. That was a terrific joke. Oh, magnificent. You're so naughty. What, my lady? You know why I wanted to see you? And I just pretended I didn't. And I told you. And it worked brilliantly, didn't it? It was terrific, madam. God, I wore my corset because I think my sides. So why did you want to see me? A lovely joke. Or perhaps, Blackadder, you don't think the Queen's jokes are funny enough for you to be troubled with. Au contraire. I'm ecstatic about the whole incident. I only didn't laugh out loud because I was afraid if I did, my head would have fallen off. You don't start soon. Now pay Melchie his 85 pounds and run along. 85 pounds? Yes. We had a bet. I said that you wouldn't fall for my trick and Melchie said you would because I'm so super and you're so stupid. You owe him 85 pounds. Oh, it's only money, isn't it? <laughs> I am not. Oh, man. Uh, How do you lose money by showing up? It, it's like, modern, well, it's modern times. Yeah. It's like, you walk outside, 100 bucks. Easy. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. You, you wake up. Wake up tax. Mm-hmm. So relatable.
All the way from Billingsgate to Richmond to play about the weakest practical joke since Cardinal Wolsey got his knob out at Hampton Court and stood at the end of the passage pretending to be a door. Shut up, Walters. You'd laugh at a Shakespeare comedy. I waited your return. And thank God you did, for I was just thinking, my God, I, I die in 12 hours. What I really need now is a hug from a complete prat. But fear not, for I have a plan to save the life of my dear, dear friend. Look, I'm not interested in your bloody friends. What about me? Not bad, Ed, but this is a good one. <laughs> oh, all right, then. What's your big plan, blockhead? I intend to discover, this very afternoon, the secret of alchemy, the hidden art of turning base things into gold. And the fact that this secret has eluded the most intelligent people since the dawn of time <laughs> doesn't dampen your spirit. I know. I like a challenge. Well, Baldus, I lost the 85 quid. The grave opens up before me like a big hole in the ground. I did have one idea, my lord, but... Nah, it's stupid. What is it? Well, I have heard there's good money to be made down the docks. <laughs> For sailors. <laughs> Favours? What do you mean? Delivering messages, sewing on buttons, I can <laughs> Not quite. All right. Well, are you suggesting that I become a rent boy? Good-looking bloke like you, posh accent, nice legs, can make a bomb. Just stick a pink carnation in your hat and uh, make the old sign. I'd rather die. Oh, fair enough, that's all right. Then I'll just put the kettle on while we wait, shall I? <laughs> With a slight alteration, your sick and sordid plan might just work. Get it here. Give me a kiss and I'll give you a... All right, go on. Nothing fancy, just a peck. I miss my mum, you see. When I was a little kid, my mother always used to oh, come... Get a move on, he's a prostitute. <laughs> just a little peck on the cheek and say, there, Arthur, mummy will kiss it better and you shall have a story. Well, I don't know. Do you do requests, Morrick? Well, kinky stuff. Okay. Oh, God, please. I miss my mother so much. She was like a mother to me. <laughs> Forgotten what I'm supposed to say. Oh. Now get out of the way, I'll do it. <laughs> there, Arthur. Mummy, kiss it better and you shall have a story. What kind of a story? Well, I don't know. One about a squirrel, I suppose. And then Squirry the Squirrel, <laughs> they all went home for tea. Oh, thanks very much, me old shivering mateys. That was wonderful. Now then, how much do you charge for a good, hard shag? Thousand pounds, you've got to be joking. Well, I'm sure we could negotiate. Right, so we've got sixpence. <laughs> oh, that for nothing. Oh, man. I'd be so pissed. Oh, my God. Uh, this was a ancient OnlyFans. I, want, I wonder how much a thousand pounds was back then. Like, quantified. Like, uh, probably like 20, 30,000. Yeah, enough that Blackadder had to borrow God. it. And die. Now, all we need to do, my lord, is to go down a cockfight and put it on a bird that's a dead cert, but has got odds of 40,000 to 1. Know you of such a bird? No, but we could make one. No, we couldn't, Baldrick. Oh, God, I suppose you have to be told sometimes. Sit down. What happens is, a mummy bird and a dad <laughs> love each other very much. Get no, no, my lord, what I mean is, we could get a mad wild killer bull and disguise it as a bird. But... It will be such a strange looking bird that no one will back it. But we'll know it's a killer bull, so we'll put money on it. Only we will know. If we stick enough feathers on it and hang an egg between its legs. Yes, all right. All right. A chat with you and somehow death loses its sting. The Queen does demand your urgent presence on pain of death. You're not making any friends here. You do know that, don't you, Madam? <laughs> you sent for me again. Yes, Edmund. I wanted to apologise for this silly trick I played on you. It was naughty and bad. It was my little rosebud. If you weren't quite so big, it'd be time for Mr. and Mrs. Spank to pay a short trip to Bossy Land. Thank you, Nursie. And thank you, Edmund. That's all. Yes. Thanks for coming. Oh, no! <laughs> that was very funny, too, wasn't it? Lady? I'm sounding it just as all the work was the first time. <laughs> it was Melchie's idea. <laughs> I think it's wonderful, don't you? It's fantastic. Belchett, I prostrate myself at the feet of the world's greatest living comedian. Oh, Edmund, um, I promised Lord Melchett that I would play a sharp halfpenny with him, but we have no coin. Do you have a halfpenny? 
Unfortunately, only a sixpence, Mum. What a shame. Oh, no. A sixpence would do just as well. Oh, good. Oh, God. <laughs> This place sticks like a pair of armoured trousers after the Hundred Years' War. Rick, have you been eating dung again? My lord, success! What? After literally an hour's ceaseless searching, I have succeeded in creating pure gold! Are you sure? Yes, my lord. Behold! Percy, it's greed. That's right, my lord. Yes, Percy, I don't want to be pedantic. But the colour of gold is gold. That's why it's called gold. What you have discovered, if it has a name, is some green. Be true and a nugget of purest green. You do, Percy, except, of course, it's not really a nugget, is it? It's more of a splat. Well, yes, a splat today, but tomorrow, who knows or dares to dream? So we three alone in all the world can create the finest green that will. Not sure about camping in Baldwick, actually. Of course, you know what your great discovery means, don't you, Percy? Perhaps, my lord. That ye Lord Percy are an utter burke. <laughs> oh, lord, pack my bags, I'm going to sell the house. What? There's nothing else for it. I shall miss the old place, I know. I've had some happy times here when, when you and Percy have been out. But needs must when the devil vomits into your kettle. Poor Rick, go forth into the streets and let it be known that Lord Blackadder wishes to sell his house. Percy, just go forth into the street. This has been dead. Oh, dear. But I have to tell you, Mr. Pants, that I've had an extremely encouraging nibble from another client, and I think you know me well enough to know that I'm not the sort of man to ignore a nibble for long. Dry rot in the bedrooms, Timothy. Well, Mrs. Pants, dry rot is as dry rot does. Stop me if I'm getting too technical. And the clothes are perhaps a little uneven. Indeed, yes, madam, and at no extra cost. Smell. Yes, that's the servant. He'll be gone. You've really worked out your banter, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. This is a different thing. It's spontaneous and it's called wit. When the master craftsman who created this home was looking at the sewage, he said to himself, Romeo, what was his name? Romeo, let's make him functional and comfortable. Oh, well, that seems nice, doesn't it, dear? I think we understand each other, sir. So, so then, Rick. But what about the privies? Well... What we're talking about in, um, privy terms is the very latest in front wall fresh air orifices combined with a wide capacity gutter installation below. You mean you crap out of the window? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. In that case, we'll definitely take it. I can't stand those dirty indoor things. That's the lot. He only wanted to pay a thousand, but I managed to beat him up to eleven hundred. And then you wily old trickster, you! Oh, credit where credit's due. I just named the price. It was Baldrick who actually beat him up. Percy, what is that on the front of your tunic? Tis a brooch, my lord. A brooch cunningly fashioned from pure green. It looks like you've sneezed. It is with trinkets such as this brooch, and here a ring, that I intend to revive your fortunes and buy back your house. You think there's a big market for jewellery that looks like snot, then? The eyes are open, the mouth moves, but Mr. Brain has long since departed, hasn't he? Passenger, <laughs> thank God you came. Percy and I could not have waited another second without you. My I'm gonna make a prediction. He's gonna lose 1,100 pounds. Going through all that trouble, selling his house. Yep. Now he is technically homeless. Uh-huh. But at least he won't die. Yeah. Well, if he loses it, he will. Yeah. Thank God you've arrived. Terrible news. What? The French intend to invade, back at it. My God. So I need some money. Yes, every nobleman must pay 500 pounds towards the upkeep of the navies. Yeah, but we've decided to make you a special case. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Melchie here hasn't got a bean, so we thought, as you're so fabulously wealthy, you could pay for both. It would be awfully sweet yes, of you. unfortunately, I'm in the middle of a cash flow crisis and I just haven't got any money on me. Good evening. Sorry. What's that in your tights? Oh, good Lord. Looks like just over a thousand pounds. That's how it is. I thought you said you didn't have any. Oh, I thought you meant real money. Oh, this is just a bit of loose change. I must have left it in my court piece when I sent these tights to the laundry. What a push oh. over. What? Oh, man. man. Yep. Come on, Blackadder, you've got yep. no backbone. Man. Wow, right. now what you gonna do? Yep. Goodbye, indeed. <laughs> Goodbye, Mum. Goodbye, Melchior. Bye. <laughs> Again? What?
What's so funny? What? Uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> now I'm going to have you executed. It's the taking the mickey out of my beloved Edmund so cruelly. <laughs> I'm going to knock your block off. I, I only have to please. Oh, please. What? <laughs> Praise the Lord for the gift of laughter. Right, Baldus, I've lost the money. I'm going to have to run away. Why, my lord? I want to avoid these monks, of course. No point. The Black Bank's got branches everywhere. Oh, <laughs> if I die, Baldy, you'd think people would remember me. Yeah, of course they would. Yes, I suppose. People would always be slapping each other on the shoulders and laughing and saying, <laughs> do you remember old Privy Breath? Do people call me Privy Breath? Yeah. The ones who like you. Then not popular. Well, put it this way. When people slip in what dogs have left in the street, they do tend to say, whoops, I've trodden an Edmund. I'll show them. What, have you got a plan, my lord? Yes, I have, and it's so cunning you could brush your teeth with it. <laughs> All I need is some feathers, a dress, some oil, an easel, some sleeping draft, lots of paper, a prostitute, and the best portrait painter in England. I'll get them right away, my lord. My lord, the most famous portrait painter in England, Mr. Leonardo Acropolis. <laughs> right, are you any good? No. I am a Jane, yeah. Better be or you're dead. Right, in the bedroom, beard face. Baldrick, get the door. Well, the Bishop of Bath and Wells. Time has come, Blackadder. Oh, hello, Bish. Black monks will have their money, or I will have my fun. You enjoy your work, don't you? Bits of it, yeah. The violent bits. Yeah, yeah you see, I am a colossal perfect. No form of sexual depravity is too low for me. Animal, vegetable, or mineral, I'll do anything to anything. Fine words for a bishop. Yes, it's nice to hear the church speaking out for a change on social issues. <laughs> Have you got the money? Nope. Good, I hate it when people pay up. Say your prayers, Blackadder. It's poker time! Fine. Are you ever concerned that people might find you out? Kill, I may, I fornicate, but as far as my flock is concerned, my only vice is a little tipple before even song. Oh, thank you. Bend over! This is where you get drugged, by God! No, I bought Rick, actually, but the effect is much the same. Nice. You clerics really are sluggerbeds. I remember drugs. That's right. You should have killed me while you had the chance. You have looked in wonder at your last dawn, Blackadder. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I did wonder, though, what people who saw this might think. But what creatures from hell are those? They make an interesting couple, don't they? I think I think you probably recognize this huge sweating mound of blubber here. <laughs> There's no point anyway. We have the preliminary sketches. Soon bang off a couple of copies. Let's see, one for the Queen, one for the Archbishop. A couple kept aside, perhaps, to form the basis of an exciting exhibition of challenging young artists' work. The homes of the Elsie How did you get me into that position? And it's so uh, beautifully framed, <laughs> don't you think? This is ironic, really, because that's exactly what's happened to you. Be never have I encountered such <laughs> foul minded perversity. Have you ever considered a career in the church? What I could use, though, is it say eleven hundred pounds to buy back my house, four thousand pounds to cover some sundry expenses, ten shillings for the two doors, and let's say threepence for a celebratory slap-up binge at Mrs. Miggins' pie shop. Yes, but first one question: Who is the second? Who could you have got to have performed such deeds? To have gone lower than man has ever gone, to have plunged the depths of degradation just in order to save your filthy life. May I introduce His Grace, the Bishop of Bath and Wells, Your Grace, Lord Percy Percy, heir to the Duchy of Northumberland. It was... Take me to morrow of this tale, in order to borrow a lender, and if your finances do fail, make sure your bank is not a bender. That was even more out there.
Dude, that was uh, awesome. That was funny, man. Yeah, more funnier than the last one. Yeah, that was clever. Your prediction man. was right. This, this is two thumbs up's yeah, not this enough is, this for this is, one. This is good, man. This is man. Good. I get it. I wonder if the, the first season built slow. And I think we're going to get to it after all this. Yeah, this yeah. Done. Just talking about it right now. But, um, this is really funny, man. Yeah. I, I really enjoy this. Um, I really enjoy Black Adder. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's still like. It's like calling back history lessons that I've learned. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, that's right. That mm -hmm. The church was everything at one point. Oh, yeah. It was the thing. It was it, you know? Yeah, yeah. We don't talk about the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, this is great, man. Yes. Shit. I can't wait for the next one. It's been great so far. Yeah. I expect the next one to be even better. Even better. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Y'all, thanks for your patronage. Thanks for help keeping the lights on. Definitely, guys. Wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck. And unplug and do something epic. See y'all next time. Later. Well, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.